Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I know we're running a, a couple of minutes late to get started, but I, I promise that the wait is going to be worth it. Um, today's webinar is Effortless and Meaningful Social Media Support and Digital Customer Service. Um, we're going to be looking at um, a, a lot of different areas today. Um, I think it's no surprise to anyone that customers prefer a quick response. Um, and so we're going to be looking at bridging that expectation cap while still providing a meaningful and engaging experience for your customer. Um, to do this, we're going to look at embracing new channels, um, some new technologies, um, and the strategies and internal structures as well um, that your company should be using in, I guess, this new age of, of customer service. Um, I'm pleased to be joined by a really great panel of experts today. Um, firstly, we have Michael Roy. Uh, Michael heads up social customer care for Alaska Airlines. Um, it's an interesting time for the airline um, as they combine with Virgin America um, and uniting best practices across both care teams. Um, so I'm sure there's lots of interesting insights there. Also joining us is Josh March. Uh, Josh is the CEO and founder of Conversocial. Um, they're one of the leading social customer service solutions and work with the likes of Hyatt, Tesco, uh, Volkswagen, Hertz and Google. So uh, lots of cross industry expertise there. I um, also want to congratulate Josh actually on the, the publication of his new book. Um, that's Message Me. Um, it's all about the future of customer service uh, in the era of messenger and artificial intelligence. So I'm sure we can jump into to that as well. Um, also joining us is Giovanni Tavani. Um, Giovanni heads up global social media support at Dell. Um, from our conversations, it's clear that Dell are one of the, the customer service leaders and are very forward facing. So I'm really pleased that he's both bringing his experience, but also his vision to this webinar. Um, and then, uh, of course, you guys are a vital part of today's discussion as well. Um, we had over 500 people signed up to this webinar. I um, we really want to incorporate you throughout. So um, please do ask questions um, in the chat box. Um, as they come through, we'll be sure to incorporate them into the discussion today. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, I'd like to kick off the, the, the webinar um, with the first poll. Um, so that's going to be coming onto your screens um, shortly. Um, and that is, which of the below do you want to achieve most in 2018? So you should do that coming onto your poll, onto your screens now. Um, if you could just click uh, on one of those and start voting now, you can see the uh, the votes coming in. And um, yeah, so just to talk through, so that seamless multiple uh, multi-channel experience, uh, reducing waiting slash response times, shifting inbound service away from traditional channels, um, internal buy-in and ROI, and providing a, a personalized experience. So I'm going to leave the poll running for a few more seconds. Uh, so that's five, four, three, two, one. So the results should be coming on your, your screens now. So it's actually quite an, an even split across those things, but, but leading the way is looking at providing a, a seamless multi-channel experience um, and also providing, I guess, more of a, a personalized experience. So uh, I think that's not surprising for us at Insight, looking at some of our, our research, but I'm interested to hear from, um, from our panelists on, on what they think. So Josh, um, coming to you first, you know, when you speak to your clients about the, the year ahead, um, when you're researching for your book, um, are these kind of the, the key things that um, came up to you as well? Is there any um, kind of surprises there for you? No, I don't think this is surprising at all. You know, one of the, the biggest trends that we've been observing across our, across our customers is wanting to integrate social and messaging fully into their CRM and the rest of their contact center stack really getting towards that kind of 360 view of the customer. You know, it's something that uh, everyone in the industry has been talking about for years, but over the last 12, 12 months, you know, specifically, we've seen a massive uptick in the number of CRM integrations and integrations with other ticketing systems that are, that are happening across every kind of industry. As people are realizing that you know, social and messaging are growing up, they're maturing, they need to be treated like proper channels. And in order to do that, you, know, you need to be able to be shifting data from social and messaging conversations into, into other channels. So an agent who's picking up the phone can see what you've just been tweeting uh, and vice versa. Uh, and I think that's a really essential part of, of, of operations going forward. Yeah, I think there's a lot of challenges there as well. So I'm sure we can dive deeper into that discussion later in the um, the webinar, looking at kind of case management and you know giving that agent a view right across every channel. Um, so Michael, coming to you next, um, are you at all surprised by these results? Um, um, I guess do they kind of reflect what you're looking at for the year ahead as well? Yeah, I think they reflect what we're looking at. One of the things I see on here that actually brings a, a smile to my face is 
uh, reduce uh, waiting response times. Uh, for a long time in our industry, that was the problem number one. Um, guests weren't getting responded to in a timely manner. And I think with a lot of the tools out there, uh, we can now efficiently do that and we can now get to those guests quickly. And, and so that's very exciting to see. And, I, you know, I think that the personalized experience and that multi, multiple channel experience tells us that we're moving on to, to those, those next more advanced phases in, in social, social guest care. Okay. That's great to hear. And, uh, yeah, I think re reducing waiting times is, um, and response times, I think, is always going to be um, always going to be on there. But I, I think, as you said, it's kind of interesting to see that now these kind of other areas people are, are looking at too. Um, so, Giovanni, coming to you as well. I, I know when we spoke previously, um, you're looking at kind of lots of things for for the year ahead. Um, but do they kind of fit with with these targets? Or are you at all surprised by um, kind of seeing personalized experience up there, for for example? No, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, actually, it looks to me like the results of an election, where you have probably different parties, different people, different names, but some of them proposing similar things. Uh, to me, <laughs> when I when I see providing a personalized experience at 30%, uh, to me that includes most of the others. If you want to provide a personalized, exceptional experience on digital in general, be it a forum or social media. It has to be seamless. The customers must not feel the difference between multiple channels that they have to repeat things three times if they decide to try to contact you on three different channels. The waiting time and the response time has to be personalized, for example, to the warranty you've purchased or to the kind of service you expect. Um, like an airline, if you are gold or platinum, you don't have to queue. Uh, or if you have a preferential queue uh, for computers, if you have a premium warranty, it's a personalized experience. You have a dedicated queue, the response time is lower, it's seamless. Um, and basically shifting inbound service away from traditional channels from the moment you open yourself into the world of social care. Uh, you are not only shifting standard service away from traditional channels, you are opening yourselves to all sorts of questions uh, on the usage of a product that customers would have never dared to pick up the phone and ask you uh, on the phone on traditional channels. They would have simply looked it up somewhere else in Google. Um, so to me, personalized experience includes most of the others. I am actually surprised about the internal buy-in and return on investment uh, to be so low. So either we have a great bunch of liars in the call or we are getting rid of this dinosaur approach that many companies suffered from in the past few years where you just want to go social media, you just want to do social care, but it's, it, it has been quite a challenge to justify its goodness. So having this small 9% it means that it, that is really the big game changer here. All the rest can fit into one bucket, I would say, but the ROI and buy-in being so low, that makes me positive, positively happy looking at the future. Yeah. yeah if, I could, uh, if I could just jump in on that quickly sure, as well. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree that, it, that it's great to see it so, so low. Um, you know, one, one kind of concern I might have with that is that you know, there are different ways of investing into social care and social messaging, right? Uh, and, and the kind of first step is just to say, well, our customers are there. We need to do the minimum amount of, of investment in terms of agents and, and process in order to be getting back to them. And you know, for a lot of even pretty big companies, that could be a pretty small team. And it's really just about doing the minimum needed to make sure you're getting back to customers. And my assumption is that almost every company today knows they have to be doing that, right? And, and that's kind of got to acceptance. Um, I think the thing that we're starting to see from, the, from leading companies today is realizing that they can actually really invest into messaging as a, as a primary channel and starting to um, you know, move huge, huge volume away from traditional channels like email, hopefully even phone, and shifting that into social messaging. And that might entail significantly bigger investments or, or a move of investment away from those traditional channels and into messaging. And I think that's a new thing that a lot of people are still figuring out. 
Um, so I think we're in the early parts of that journey still. Okay, so it's almost like it's, it's starting again. You know, people have, have reached their, I guess, kind of maturity um, of kind of what they were originally expecting from social. And then now messengers coming along uh, and these new messaging channels is kind of starting the whole pro process of convincing your, your boss all over again um, that you need a, another round of investment. And um, I mean, it's, for, for me, it's, it, I sort of found it quite surprising to see it so low. Um, I think although um, people are, have, have kind of matured and have that, um, I, I guess, kind of social strategy in place, and I think there's been a lot more questions asked of, of customer service teams overall. Um, you know, how do they work with marketing? How do they uh, correlate with the rest of the, the wider business? Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised that maybe not on the, I guess, the monetary side, but kind of looking at how the customer service can work with the rest of the business. Um, there's not more questions on, on ROI or internal buy-in there. Um, but, Michael, coming to you, I mean, did you, we, did you get many kind of awkward questions on the kind of the buy-in side or your team already kind of very bought in on this and the, the powers that be, you know, already um, kind of, you know, very happy to invest? Michael, are you, are you still with us? I am still with you. I apologize. Um, no worries. You're all you're always going to uh, have issues on the buy-in side. And and I think companies will um, always have, to, social teams will always have to prove uh, their worth. Uh, guests and, you know, the, the, the companies, ev ev like Josh said, everyone's doing the minimum, but now we're getting into this advanced stage where it, it's going to require more investment, more time. You know, when I take a look at the poll here, you know, if we were to poll most people, I think this is going to this is going to play out because internal buy-in and ROI is not as important as it, as that um, that experience that we need to be providing our guests. Okay. That, that that makes sense. I, yeah, it's. I mean, I'm, I guess kind of my, my next question was going to be around kind of moving on from those minimums and providing an even greater experience for for your guests. Um, when you're looking at uh, looking ahead, you know, maybe the, towards the end of 2018, start of 2019, um, you know, what are the the key things um, you think that people should be looking out for? What are they going to be the the game changers on on social media support, and um, that are going to help kind of drive that retention and um, yeah, and, and better customer experience. So I, I guess Josh, I come to you first. I know you're, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're very well researched on Messenger. Um, is, for you, I, is that the biggest game changer moving forwards, or how do you see that see that I'm kind of fitting into to the picture? Sure, I, I think there are two main kind of pillars that uh, combined are going to be really disruptive to customer care over the next few years, and that's messaging, the rise of messaging, and also automation. And in many ways, we're still in pretty early stages in both of these, and you know, companies are experimenting, um, but we're starting to see some pretty impressive results in certain areas. You know, on the rise of messaging, pretty much across the board, we, we have seen private messaging uh, be growing faster than, than any other channel, certainly way faster than, than, than kind of public social media. And for many of our biggest clients, it, is, it has overtaken uh, public social media in terms of inbound volumes, for some clients really significantly. Um, and you know, this has been helped by, I think, a lot of companies being much more willing to actively promote messaging as a service channel, you know, putting message us uh, on their contact us page in a way that they were, were much less willing or much more hesitant to promote public social media. Um, it's also because of the, the big innovation that's been happening in, in the messaging field. I mean, if we just take Facebook Messenger itself, uh, I know we'll chat more about that later, but, but you know, Facebook Messenger chat. Uh, has been this huge innovation that is now allowing many businesses to replace traditional web chat with a messenger widget. Uh, and that, that widget kind of allows all the benefits of traditional web chat with all the benefits of asynchronous messaging and persistent communication and conversations that can move seamlessly from the web to mobile. Um, so that's pretty game changing. And you know, as a result, we're starting to see uh, you know, messaging becoming you know, 25 percent, even 50 plus percent of all service volume for some clients, which is huge. Um, and then automation as well. Again, I know we'll, we'll chat more about that later, but uh, you know, messaging is pretty unique in the way that you can combine automation and humans in the same conversation. 
Uh, and I think that is what is pretty game changing because it means you don't have to have a kind of standalone chatbot which creates a negative experience. Instead, you can seamlessly combine you know, bots and humans just to deliver the best possible and the fastest possible and the most efficient uh, re resolution to your customers. Uh, and I think that's pretty, pretty exciting. And that's something we're already kind of delivering to many of our clients today. Okay, and I'd be really interested on, on that. You mentioned there about, um, I guess, different um, um, ad adoption rates and um, yeah, different volume rates um, for different companies um, that have switched um, from, I guess, maybe traditional web chat to kind of embrace Messenger more. Um, with, um, I guess, looking at your kind of client base and, and the people you work with, um, what type of companies are seeing the highest, um, yeah, the highest volume rates on Messenger? Does it tend to be companies with a younger audience or a kind of a more tech-savvy audience, or, or is it just kind of generally a, across the board? You know, it's still pretty early on, right? So we part, we worked with Facebook to launch the beta version of Facebook Messenger chat, mes uh, Messenger customer chat, sorry, in November, just a, a very limited release. Uh, it was announced officially on stage F8. Uh, last week, which is very exciting. Uh, we have around six clients who, who have implemented it already today. Uh, and we've built a lot of functionality around it. And those are in uh, a variety of industries, uh, including airlines, uh, retail, uh, utilities. So, so kind of across the board, and probably too early to say a big trend. Uh, we did just release a case study uh, last week with Valeris, uh, the Mexican airline, who have uh, been using Messenger customer chat since the launch. Uh, and they've actually now transferred 60% of all of their customer service volume, including phone and email, into messaging, which is obviously really, really huge. Um, you know, the, when it comes to Facebook and Messenger, obviously, yeah, everyone is using it uh, across all age demographics, which is a big advantage. Um, and it's pretty, pretty widely spread geographically. Um, so there are other platforms which have more you know, geographic or age niches, but certainly when it comes to Facebook and Messenger, it's, it's pretty much across the board. Okay, so it's still, still early days with the, the web chat, but yeah, it's great to hear it's uh, across the board and hitting some of the demographics with Messenger in general. Um, and uh, yeah, Giovanni, coming to you next, what do you think is going to be the kind of the, the biggest game changer people should be looking out for, um, I guess, kind of later this year and, and looking into the future? Well, uh... I really see some differences based on geography, okay? Uh, yeah. I do believe that that WhatsApp, once WhatsApp releases the API uh, for WhatsApp for Business, that is going to be a big game changer. And we see it in Asia where the market is more mature in terms of usage and they have something called WeChat. Uh, WeChat sure. includes all the best features from Facebook, WhatsApp, Skype, uh, PayPal, Amazon, all into one uh, one-stop shop, one application. They they use it for everything, and including uh, for customer care on social. So if WhatsApp is released, uh, uh, it will give that kind of feeling uh, to customers. Unless WeChat decides to go beyond the Great Wall of China and uh, and uh, invade the Western world. It is already available on, on, in all countries, just not used as much as it is in China or the rest of the world. Um, but I would say that, yes, I agree a thousand percent that staying on social but providing a chat-like experience to users is the next step. Seamless, fast, and in real time. Uh, users will simply have the... The, the chance to decide if they just want to throw a question, go do their life, spend time elsewhere and find the answer at the end of the day on their Facebook or simply uh, be attended by a social media agent on the spot. Uh, I do believe that that choice has to remain on the customer side. Um, we must not make the mistake to consider social media or forums like just another so, uh, technical support or customer services channel. If we do that, we are probably wrong. It is customer service, but it's much more than that. Customer will use it to ask questions they would never ask to a customer service uh, environment, but uh, we cannot limit to service in general. And, and I come from customer service, but I can see that the kind of questions are go beyond the usual phone or email or chat 
uh, support on traditional channels. So something immediate and wider and broader in terms of scope, this is where we're heading and this is where we should go. Okay, that's interesting. And I think um, many marketers would be jealous of kind of this access um, that customer service departments have um, now with, with the customers. Um, kind of this one-to-one -one interactions they're having and you know, questions back and forth. Um, so yeah, I think it is, it's very interesting. And um, yeah, interesting to hear as well that you think kind of um, looking at kind of WeChat as an example um, for how WhatsApp can, can develop. Um, so Michael, coming to you next, um, what's kind of big on, on your roadmap for, for the coming year? Or what do you think is going to be the kind of the, the next big big trend? Do you kind of echo what Josh and Giovanni are saying? Or is there any kind of other areas you'd, you'd want us to, to look into? No, I, I kind of echo that. But, uh, you know, the thing I'm really excited about is that our, our guests are going to have more choices. Uh, they... Uh, and I think that's going to present a, a new challenge for us uh, with these choices because you want to have a similar guest experience. So you, whether the customers coming to you through web chat, phone, email, SMS, social messenger, you know, we even still receive, uh, believe it or not, traditional mail uh, that comes in. So uh, the guests guests are going to be more empowered than they've ever been. Now it's going to be up to companies to make sure that that the sim that the experience is somewhat similar uh, with all these channels to make sure that we're in fr front of every channel and providing um, the support for these channels. You don't want someone emailing your company and, and waiting a month for a response. Yeah, and Josh, it's it's Giovanni again. Sorry if I jump in. I, uh, Michael, I totally agree with what you just said. And going back to to your comment on the marketing uh, being jealous, um, I would like to recommend to all the people listening to us that 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 thing about silos between marketing and social care uh, on social media, we we should try and that should be probably the obstacle. We should try and go beyond that. It happens in many companies, but we must remind everybody that Facebook or any other social channel is an external platform. It can be used by two different departments. As long as there is a common roadmap and a common ground of ideas, there should not be any marketing saying, no, Facebook is only for us, so customer service, stay away from it. Uh, but then again, if you, if you promote a, pro uh, um, a product, whatever that is, you must expect customers to talk about it and ask questions. And that's where customer services on social becomes a must. So there must be a discussion between marketing and social customer services to work and share the same platforms. Uh, those silos must be broken. And at the same time, customer services can hire people with marketing profile to create those uh, auto answers, to simple Q and A's that bots can help with. Um, we have to do some active listening. We have to produce this content. And I mean, let's face it, for many of our companies, uh, solutions are usually documents or white papers are far from being interesting to read. But a digital marketeer uh, millennial can easily turn a, a technical document into an infographic or even a video uh, that is where marketing and customer services can work together. We need market here, millennial profile to do customer services content. Use this content as a bot uh, answer. And if that is not working, I agree with Josh, the human must be there to support. Okay, that, that's interesting. So how would you go about kind of building that relationship um, with the marketing department? Is it the case of, um, you know, you just need to kind of sit down and uh, agree a set of goals together? Do you, I mean, do you have a chief customer officer who helps kind of bridge that gap? How does that, that work at, at Dell? Well, one of the two has to be enlightened enough to make the first step, go towards the other and say, guys, you have your content roadmap. We have our presence and content roadmap. Let's make sure that they are shared, that we use the same technology to publish, and that we publish at different times of the day, of the week. And then we give to customers what they expect. Make sure that if you talk about a promo on a product, then we also give tips and tricks on how to use the same product in parallel from a services perspective. The two roadmaps can be shared and can have coordinations from both departments. Uh, trust me, it's much easier to do 
uh, then what we think the difficult part here is to agree on it. Um, I've seen more hurdles and more problems of people saying, no, social media is a marketing tool. And that is a wrong assumption. And if I can just um, jump in here as well, completely agree with everything Giovanni just said. Uh, just to add to that, yeah, uh, that connection between marketing and customer care and that communication it really should exist regardless of channel, right? Even if you just take email, marketing, give out a new promotion or do an email promotion, there's going to be a massive come of in, you know, a massive increase in inbound email volume. And if customer care are unprepared for that, then then that can be a problem. I think social media uh, has kind of thrown that into sharp relief and they people realize that, oh yeah, yeah, we can really mess up if we're not communicating properly between the teams. But that communication needs to happen uh, regardless of channel. Uh, and I think that that's just something that's essential for every business to be thinking about. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll even jump in here again. Uh, <laughs> I, with with marketing and, and and the care teams, I, I think we saw a shift from marketing uh, four or five years ago uh, when guests started uh, have reaching it reaching back out to brands uh, with this wonderful content marketing was producing. Uh, everything shifted over to the care teams. Now now we're finding uh, it's very exciting that 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 marketing can actually go through our care teams and the conversations that we are having with our guests is a way to market our companies. Uh, and so I don't even think that, that we need to break down the site. Well, you know, just like we have all our ser service channels somewhat siloed and we're always talking about breaking down those silos, we need to break down those internal silos, bring these teams together so that Instead of uh, having a marketing department and a care department, we can combine the two for social, so that we're doing the same. We're doing both at the same time. Okay. Actually, I think that. So go ahead. Actually, Bill Gates himself he said that uh, good social support is the new marketing, uh, and good social media presence is the new marketing. I, I agree with you, Michael. That's a, a absolutely fair assumption. Um, I do believe that some companies are becoming more mature on that. Uh, some other companies are just having trouble to shift from a marketing perspective, from traditional to social. Uh, it's an easier step some, somehow for, uh, for the technical or customer services side to do this, this shift because, because of their skills and profiles. Uh, but I do agree that those silos, we, we're starting to see more and more of them being broken, and that's very good. Yeah, I think it's, it's um, I guess, still a little bit su su surprising that you know, five years ago, people were talking about customer centricity and putting the customer at the heart of your business. But you know, here we are five years later, still trying to break those silos down, still trying to create a, a better dialogue with our company and um, with our customers and unite our company. So it's, it's, yeah, it's surprising. And just to jump back to an earlier part of the conversation, um, Michael, you mentioned there um, that it's a great time for the customer being able to um, message um, Alaska on lots of different platforms and get in touch, you know, anything from Messenger uh, through to kind of sending a additional post. Um, do you signpost some channels more than others or are there kind of certain channels you direct people to or do you just let the customer kind of pick what, what's, what, what works best for them? Well, we always, initially, it's always going to be what works best for our guest. So the guest is going to come in on the channel of their choice. Uh, do we have a preference? Uh, we always prefer, I mean, if you ask my marketing department, they're going to prefer, you know, public messaging. If you ask my PR department, they would prefer private messaging. Uh, for our social care team, uh, we kind of take that neutral approach. However, the guest comes in is where we're going to respond. Uh, if it's a sensitive issue, we're going to try to get the message to, to go private. If in, if there's PII involved, uh, and, you know, we always want that private. Uh, and we're seeing, like Josh is saying, we're, we're seeing triple-digit growth in private messaging. So I guess our guests are telling us where they're going to be, and we'll just be okay. there. Uh, that's a, a good approach to have. Um, and Josh, coming to you next, I'm interested to hear kind of what channels um, 
you're looking at in, in the future. We've spoken a little bit about um, WeChat and kind of WhatsApp for business. I know Apple Business Chat have um, a, a new platform coming out as well. Um, what are your thoughts on that and kind of what are you looking into at it, it Conversocial as being kind of the next big uh, big uh, channels? Yeah, the, I mean, the rise of private messaging is certainly you know the big headline here. Uh, it's been really exciting seeing the huge innovation that Facebook Messenger have been making over the last year and continue to make. Uh, so I see that as a channel that is going to keep getting bigger. Um, as G Giovanni mentioned, you know, WhatsApp for business is coming. Um, you know, we've been discussing that with them for a while. Mark Zuckerberg actually announced it again on stage that they're working on it. Uh, so there's no fixed time, but we know that those enterprise APIs are coming hopefully this year, you know, very likely sometime in the next 12 months. I really think that that's just going to be huge internationally. You know, WhatsApp, not so much in the US, but certainly across Europe, across South America, you know, it's completely eclipsed SMS in terms of volume. Um, it's really just become the default way that, that everyone is communicating in those areas. Uh, and a lot of businesses have been using it, you know, many semi-unofficially uh, for the last couple of years already. So I think that's going to be absolutely huge once that fully releases and we're going to see a big, big increase. Um, I am also, uh, WeChat is another channel that we actually recently just announced uh, about a month ago that we now support for all of our clients. Uh, you know, our focus there is mainly on our American and global customers who, who have customers in China. Um, you know, from a usage perspective, as Giovanni mentioned, although it's usable all around the world, it is mainly Chinese, uh, mainly used in China and, and Chinese people who are international. Um, Apple Business Chat is another one that I am really excited about, especially for the US, you know, where iMessage, which is what it's built on top of, is is still really dominant. You know, WhatsApp hasn't really had the same success in America but versus Apple iMessage. Uh, business chat is exciting for a number of reasons. You know, first of all, like, like WhatsApp, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, so it's completely secure. You know, that's often a concern that's raised um, when using something like Facebook Messenger, which while, while secure and private is not end-to-end -end encrypted. So a lot of people are excited about that. Uh, it's great that it doesn't require any kind of app um, and it's very tightly integrated with a number of key areas of functionality, including Siri, right? So you'll be able to just say to Siri, hey Siri, message Hyatt, tell them I need to check out late. Um, and that would just, just happen, right? Just send it and, and the company can respond via iMessage. Uh, also integrated into Maps. So if you're looking at a physical location, like a restaurant or a hotel or a shop in Apple Maps, you can just start a message dialogue there and then. Uh, and tight integration with Apple Pay, which means it's going, it's really, really easy um, to integrate payments into that flow. Uh, and I think that kind of commerce and sales and upsells is a kind of new and emerging area in messaging, which has the potential to be really impactful for a lot of businesses from a revenue and sales perspective in a way that uh, companies are only just starting to think about. So cr across the board, there's a number of these these new messaging, business messaging platforms coming online that already have huge consumer adoption and which is going to introduce a lot of new capabilities uh, into the market, which I'm excited about. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that. I'm sure there's going to be lots of interesting examples um, as people adopt even more of, I guess, the, the Apple ecosystem. And um, yeah, there'll be lots of interesting use cases there. Um, Giovanni, I'm interested to, to come to you. Um, Dell being a, a global company, um, do you find there's a lot of best practices that, that kind of fit all, all the different kind of messaging apps and, and channels? Or um, are there any particular kind of areas that you think maybe, say, a, a different between WhatsApp and WeChat that people should be aware of? How easy is it to have kind of one, a, a one-stop guide, I guess, that kind of covers all the different channels? Or really, do you have to rethink your approach completely for, for every channel? Uh, the approach has to be uh, rethought completely because it's entirely into the hands of users. Uh, I, I echo what Michael said. Uh, an, an, um, a telephone number to contact customer services or email or chat, you end up in a system that is completely built by the brand that the user wants to get in touch with. Social media is outside of that. Social media is some kind of neutral ground and uh, we have to be where customers are, and this is what we're trying to, what we, we're trying, what we built in Dell. Uh, we simply developed all the social platforms where customers like to be in each global region. Um, 
even in China, when we launched WeChat, we, we knew we would be flooded. Uh, in Japan, we are launching Line. Uh, and in Line, I know we're going to be flooded as well. Uh, in China with WeChat, we went from a team of six people three years ago to uh, 250 today. We have more than 10,000 contacts per, per day. It's, it's massive, okay? Um, so the challenges are to be where customer wants you to be and at the same time not to, dis to disappoint them. Uh, a, the, the, the relationship between a brand and a user on social networks is pretty much like the trust between two human beings. Uh, it takes a while to build, it takes a second to destroy, and it's very, very difficult to build it back. Um, so um, if you launch, for example, WhatsApp, make sure that between the bots and the human that you are ready to answer pretty much immediately. Don't just try uh, and hope that the customer stays there and wait for half an hour before you get back to him. That's not gonna fly. So <clears throat> the biggest challenge here is really not to, uh, to, to plan which uh, to plan how to channel questions. The first challenge is actually on selecting the right one for the right geography, geolocation, geolocalization of users, and make sure that you staff it accordingly. Um, what we did at Dell is also a one-stop shop. Our agents on social care uh, are actually handling questions uh, A to Z. They do not dispatch internally. Uh, they are able to answer and fix things exactly as if a customer was calling customer services on the phone. Um, we decided to go into the dire that direction uh, because if a customer chooses to contact us on social, why should we want to ask him to go somewhere else or make him wait because we need to check somewhere else? That makes absolutely no sense. Social media should be a one-stop shop. And full ownership, handling, case management, A to Z, that's what we do. And uh, it requires some very strong technology behind uh, to make sure that you're able to do that and integrate it with your CRM. If I could um, just add on to that, first of all, warms my heart to hear about you know, the need for short response times. Uh, it's been mentioned a few times that completely aligned with that, right? You know, if, uh, if someone messages you and they don't get a response for a couple of hours, then you know, if they've got an urgent issue, they're just going to end up phoning you as well. And you're going to end up with you know, double the agent effort that's being duplicated and more cost. You know, if you can get back to that, that customer quickly, uh, you know, as I know, uh, you know, Alaska, I think, have a response time of about six minutes, which is pretty incredible. You know, if you get back to a customer in that, in that kind of time window, then they will trust that they can use uh, that channel to resolve their issue and they, they won't phone which is obviously the, the big goal for everyone. Um, so, so I think that's a really important point. Just quickly on, on uh, your original question around uh, the different messaging channels. One thing I think is worth pointing out is that uh, it's much easier to have a single agent handling multiple messaging channels than it, than it is to have a single agent handling multiple social channels. Um, you know, on, the, on the kind of public social media, you tend to see much bigger differences in the way that communication can happen. You know, if you just take kind of Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram as, as three examples, the way that people can comment, the way that people can post, the way that people can respond, the way that you can handle public content is completely different for all of those channels. And if you had an agent that tried to treat Twitter like Facebook, you know, it could really go pretty horribly wrong. Um, you know, there needs to be a lot of specific understanding and it, the agent needs to be very aware of what they're doing. And we've had some client, although we have many clients who will mix it up and just have the clients handle, the, the agents handling everything, we have some clients who will actually say, you know, for today, this group of agents will just work on Twitter, this group of agents will just work on Facebook, et cetera, and they find that more efficient. But with private messaging, the form factor tends to be uh, if not exactly the same, very similar, right? Private messaging, Twitter DM looks pretty much like private messaging on Facebook Messenger, looks pretty much like, like private messaging on WeChat. There are some geographical differences. So, you know, in WeChat in China, for example, people tend to leave a lot of voice messages. 
Uh, and so you need to account for those, the, the different geos and how the users use it. But from a basic way, the platforms work. Messaging tends to be more similar and, and easier to blend, which is definitely helpful going forward. Okay, so you need to have a, a different strategy for, for each messaging channel, um, but there are a lot of basics that can, can cross over and it makes it a bit easier on the agent side. Uh, so I think that's a, a great approach. Um, Michael, I, I guess coming to you, um, Josh mentioned there about just how quick Alaska's response times are. Uh, I'm interested to hear, um, and you also mentioned earlier as well, actually, about how, how much you've had to scale and how, how quickly. Um, so I'm interested to hear how you have that scale and uh, the, the quick response times while still actually keeping you know, a human approach and um, you know, making it, having that, that human element um, and having a, a meaningful dialogue with your customers. So could you talk us a little bit how you've managed to scale um, your, um, yeah, your, your social customer care? Absolutely. Uh, one of the th- one of the things we've always prided ourselves on from day one was real people, real conversations. Uh, it's very important to us. It's it's at the heart of who we are. Um, I've always shied away a little bit from automation. Uh, I know it's coming. I, I know that there, for, for Alaska Airlines, uh, we're going to be seeing it. We will be entering into the point where, uh, you know, simple information that we need from our guests that will be pretty much consistent. We will go ahead and serve up to them uh, when they enter the conversation so that the agents can be prepared. Uh, But getting back to the real people, real conversations, um, it's important just to, and it it ties in marketing, it ties in care. Uh, It's important to have that one-on-one conversation. And, you know, people ask, you know, how do you do it and and keeping response time so low? I I think step number one uh, is getting the right tool in place. Step number two would be make, make sure that you, that you, you filter out the noise. I, I, I keep what I see on social, and it's a trend that I see a lot of companies uh, make. They make this mistake is that they are bringing in the entire pipeline to their their care teams. Uh, they're not bringing in those actionable conversations that really matter to their their company. So I think you really need to take a look at everything that's coming in. Measure measure your spam. Start start doing metrics on your spam. And, and find out how much you're actually deflecting from your care channels because we always build ROI on, on conversations handled. But, you know, I think there's a picture to paint for our executives, the leadership on what we're actually moving away from our care teams. Uh, sometimes we, we have to move it away daily. We, we have uh, our, our leadership team here who's, who's always created new rules to redirect the conversation. Um, So it's really important to get your guest in front of the agent instead of having, you know, the agents working, you know, archiving a a stock ticker symbol, which I, I see a lot of teams doing. So getting the right message in front of the agents is key. Okay, so it all, come, all comes down to the agents. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on, on chatbots. And I know a lot of uh, chatbots are kind of in their infancy. Um, some people are, yeah, are really big on them. Others are, yeah, a little bit more apprehensive. Um, I know from some of our conversations, you maybe fall into, you know, the, the, the kind of the more of the human side than the chatbot side. But yeah, can you talk to me about what your, your thoughts are for, for chatbots and kind of where they could fit in in, in the future for, for Alaska? Yeah, you know, one of the things we keep hearing from our guests time and time again is, you know, if if an agent is kind of having the same conversation, uh, you know, for example, you know, in the airline industry, what does everyone love to do when they travel? They love to take selfies. Uh, we respond to all those selfies. Uh, it's important for us to, and that that's where we come, that's where we become marketers. So it, it's not a care issue, but they, they took a selfie at the airport and they're saying Viva Las Vegas. They're going to they're going to Vegas. So it's important that we reach out and we we say hi. Sometimes we can come across if an agent is just doing this and saying great picture, great picture, great picture. It can have a bot light. It can sound somewhat bot like. Um, our customers will call us out. Uh, they they are concerned and they're on edge 
that they are going to be talking to a bot. Um, so we've we've always been hesitant with the with bots, um, and but but we know that you know and. And I work a lot with Josh, so so Josh has been great in this. Josh, Josh is the expert on on taking that automation, combining it uh, with our with the human voice, and and taking the conversation and seamlessly making it feel like you can have an autom somewhat automated experience with that that. At the end of the day, that human interaction. Okay, so that's uh, that's interesting. And, and Josh, I, I, I guess I'd love for you to jump in here. Um, obviously, you've just been mentioned as the, the experts, so I definitely want to get your opinion on um, on this. What, what's, what's your stance on bots? Obviously, um, you know, Messenger, um, you very much see as the, the future. But how do bots fit into that that picture? Uh, and I guess kind of what's the time frame as well? Should be people looking to have bots now, or is this something that is going to be mainstream in say three years time, five years time? What, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. Well, I think and and thanks for your kind words, uh, Michael, on that. Um, you know, I, I think it's worth thinking about automation in a pretty wide way when it comes to customer care. And firstly, I will separate out kind of public social media. You know, I think in the public space, um, you know, having focusing more on that human element. I think makes a lot of sense. Um, I think when you're looking at private messaging, especially as you start to you know, promote messaging as a service channel or use it as a chat plugin on your website, and you're starting to really drive really large inbound volumes of kind of one-on-one -on -one care issues, um, automation becomes more and more important. Um, now, again, as, as Michael said, you, know, you can't just come, and Giovanni mentioned earlier, you can't just lose that human element completely. You know, when you look at complex customer care conversations, you know, there's a long tail of different issues and it's very, very difficult to try and create a, a seamless bot that can handle any kind of service conversation today. Uh, and so kind of trying to do that too quickly will just lead to a negative experience. You know, lead to a bot saying, you know, can't understand you, can't help you, have to you know, hand you over to a human and it can be a kind of bad experience. That handover can be a bad experience. You know, if, if someone messages you and and they, they speak to a bot who doesn't help and who frustrates them, they'll probably end up phoning, and then you've got you know, an expensive resolution uh, and a really pissed off customer. So it's kind of the worst of, of, of all worlds, right? Um, but you can use the bot platforms today uh, to do very basic things, right? So for about 30 of our clients, we're using the bot platform for when you first come into the messaging flow, have a, have a menu system where you can select the type, you know, select, self-identify what kind of problem you're having based on uh, what you select, the bot can ask for certain information. Once you provide that information, we then take you to a human agent. Right? And so it means that we're getting to a human agent very, very quickly. As soon as you get to that human agent, the human agent has, isn't, doesn't have to have a back and forth and ask questions. They have all the information they need to resolve the issue. Uh, and then once they've resolved it, we're also looking at how you use automation in the whole, you know, in the whole thread of that, right? So automated surveys at the end of it, CSAT and MPS surveys. How can you automate more stuff on the back end in terms of what the agent is doing? You know, any, any actions they're taking to tag, to add sentiment, um, to collect information. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can automate in terms of the entire agent experience in order to decrease response times, increase uh, you know, the overall efficiency of the operation while never damaging the customer experience. And I think the kind of the principle for us is you know, never have a bot telling a customer that it doesn't understand them. You know, always have to have the bot handling, handling, you know, handling very simple stuff. And whenever it has something more complex, taking that to a human and then have automation providing support to the human, um, the human agent to resolve. And I think that's the kind of key design principle. And I think over time, uh, using that design principle, it'll be possible to layer in more and more automation. You know, we're, we're looking at how we can use machine learning to uh, suggest responses, to automate more and more simple questions. And I think that over the next three to five years, we're going to be able to get to a place where you know, automation can really be the front line for almost any issue. And you have human agents acting as an escalation channel for more complex or emotional issues. Um, and with a system like that, I think over time, you will be able to get to a point where 
you know, a smaller number of, of very savvy, highly trained agents will be able to really help a large number of customers over messaging very efficiently while delivering a great experience. And so I think that's what everyone needs to be moving to. But you do there bit by bit, um, you know, step by step and not trying to, to bite off more than you can chew immediately. Okay, so uh, I, I guess a hybrid model where you slowly empower the agents to be able to do more and more um, rather than just giving the bot kind of direct access to kind of the agent works as um, either backup when, when you know, things need escalating or um, I, I guess kind of as a, a, a monitor really to, to kind of monitor exactly what the bot's saying, kind of choosing the answers to some extent. Um, so Giovanni, I'm coming to, to you next. What, what are your thoughts on kind of bots and automation and what sort of role are they playing at, at Dell? Uh, exactly as Josh just mentioned. Basically, we've we've started with loads of analytics to understand out of 100% of the questions we get in each country, how many can be easily answered with a simple answer, an answer that can be a written answer, a link, a video tutorial, uh, or a document, uh, or an infographic, or a visual. And the other questions that are complex, Based on PNL and uh, sentence recognition, so not only we're moving away from keywords, we are looking at PNL and sentence recognitions. Uh, our bots initially identify uh, the potential answer to what the customer is talking about, but they clearly make sure with customers that that is not the end of the story. So, based on your question, this could be your uh, your solution. Do you think this is accurate? We let the customer say yes or no. If the answer is yes, it means they under it means our bot understood that question and we are giving a solution. If the customer clearly says no, that is not what I'm expecting, then immediately there's a human being behind that uh, to go through that. And it's a kind of uh, 70 to 30, 70 percent soft calls versus 30 percent hard calls. The hard calls is where we definitely need a human being immediately, and 70% are just Q and A's or uh, how to do this, how to do that, and are usually pretty straightforward. So this is where the bots tries to try to understand what the would uh, what the best answer would be. Um, so we we are absolutely aligned with what Josh just said. Our technology is allowing to do that, and we are now moving to an implementation language by language. Um, you know, on, on Western languages, including English, there is one approach. Uh, in Latin languages, there is another one. In Asian languages, it's completely different because customers, they type with uh, symbols. And that's a whole different story. So it really has to be adapted and your bots have to be adapted to uh, the local culture. Yeah, I think that that makes complete sense. And everyone I speak to that has a bot, um, there's there's always been at least kind of some sort of teething problem or something going wrong. So they'd always recommend to have a, a really long implementation period where you can do all that testing. You know, kind of there's Absolutely. been a lot of things you didn't didn't expect. So yeah, I think that that's um, yeah that's completely right. So um, I just want to leave some time at the end for for a few questions from the audience. So please do type them into the the chat box if you um, yeah if you have any thoughts or, or questions. Um, but we had a question from Andrew earlier, um, and he wanted to know about automation and privacy. So obviously there's some, um, especially for regulated industries, um, there's some questions maybe with regards to kind of financial details um, that traditionally agents can't uh, um, can't answer um, um, over, over, I guess, kind of public channels or um, even direct message. And he's wanting to know if there's any ways automation can kind of play a role in, in solving that issue. Um, yeah, for instance, could they kind of um, then hand over to a, a bot that can do some sort of authentication? Or, um, yeah, I'm wondering if kind of, Josh, you have any kind of uh, case studies for that or have you, you've heard of that happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we already, uh, for some of our clients who are in regulated industries and who uh, are unable to take PII over something like Messenger or Twitter, uh, we do have automated workflows where uh, we can securely authenticate a customer today. Um, you know, that works. You know, that, that's really about just identifying who a customer is so that so that an issue can be resolved over messaging. Uh, I think we are seeing um, yeah, imminently the launch of WhatsApp and, and business chat, which are both end-to-end -end encrypted, which is going to be significant in that. 
and you know, in the light of the kind of Cambridge Analytica issues, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Messenger started taking a harder line on their own security, uh, which I think is, is worth watching out for. Um, and, and absolutely right, you know, in the same way that you can go on the phone and sometimes you need to insert payment details and it will take you off to an automated experience to do that so that the, you're not just handing over your credit card details to the agent. Uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward to do that kind of thing in automation today in messaging. Um, there's tighter integration with payments, more security coming. And so I think that the whole space is going to get a lot easier for brands over the next 12 to 18 months. Okay, I know I had a similar question from Alexa there about um, kind of payments, so it's, it's great to hear that it's going to get easier from them. I've got a, a question um, from Gregory, so I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he wanted to learn um, more about AI, so are any of you able to speak, I guess, more on the, the AI side of once you have these um, kind of bots or systems set up um, that are kind of self-learning um, and able to, to adapt? Um, do you have much experience with, with those? With the technology we're using at Dell, uh, our system that, that we use for bots is also self-learning. So as, we, as we're switching away from keywords but moving to key sentences and P&L recognition, uh, the system will learn that to a specific uh, series of words and a specific tone of the words, uh, of the sentences, there is um, a better answer than another. So this is where AI uh, plays a big role. We are piloting this. Uh, it seems to be working. The good thing is that the system learns from users' questions, but they also learn from our own intervention when we identified that the answer provider was not the one the customer was looking at, and we have to jump in. So that's where AI has to be very good. Uh, th and that's why probably Michael, Josh, I'm not sure what you think about it, but I do believe that social and digital customer care can be extremely successful in parallel to the success and the goodness of the technology you apply to it. 100%. So I know we're, we're getting to the kind of the end of the webinar um, and we're kind of running over a little bit. Um, I just wanted to squeeze in one last question for, for Michael. Um, and this was from Rohan. Um, and he wanted to know, I, I guess, kind of a, about airlines and how, what sort of things you, you can um, automate. What can those sort of transactional things you can automate from things like check-in, seat allocation, um, things like that. Are, are they going to be coming to social anytime soon or is, is check-in going to be um, very much in, stuck in the, the web and uh, at the check-in desk? You know, the thing about airlines is we, we've already built pretty advanced systems out there with, with our... Our, our apps, so the, I hate duplicating efforts. Um, and we don't have a lot of people coming to social saying, you know, help, we need help checking in because they go to the app to check in. Uh, there are boarding passes on the app. Uh, there's a lot of things built into the app, so I, d I don't want to duplicate. Um, you know, in talking about AI, uh, and um, I, I just want to make sure that it's really important that we keep social, we keep the human interaction and social within social. Um, I, I'm going to be, I will be not the last one to to convert over to AI. We're going to do it when we need to because I'm afraid to lose the that human touch point because businesses we need to have that human interactions. Our guests want the human interaction. And uh, it's critical. We spend a lot of money on billboards. We spend a lot of money on signage, commercials, radio advertising. But now we have a, a guest is reaching out to us. And it's, it's like gold. It's so valuable. A guest reaches out to us unsolicited on social media. And now we can have a real person having a conversation with the guest. It, it really gets me fired up and very excited to be able to have these opportunities. But getting back to your question, that you know, a lot of this stuff is done through apps. When guests do come to social, uh, it's probably flight status. Um, and so I, I think we can provide flight status on social, but uh, again, I, I don't want to be duplicating efforts. Okay. 
Well, I think that's a, a great place to, to finish on, Nick. I mean, bringing it back to the customer and keeping that human interaction and, and not losing it. Um, we've still got plenty of questions um, coming through. Um, but so I guess if you'd like more information, there's a few ways um, you can get it. Um, the first is, um, especially, um, well, for, for Messenger, it's been a, a big part of the, the conversation. Uh, be sure to check out um, Josh's new book. Josh, do you want to give us the quick elevator pitch for, for your book? And, and by the way, if anyone wants to look at that, we've just sent a link through uh, the chat for you all to have a look at the, the Amazon description. But Josh, is there any kind of quick uh, elevator overview you'd like to give of the, the book? Sure. The very high level is that the book really sets out my vision for how the combination of messaging and automation will disrupt customer care over the next three to five years and talk through the trends that are behind that, as well as a kind of practical case studies and examples of how uh, brands and execs can be implementing those technologies today. Oh, great, great. Be sure, yeah, so be sure to check the book out. The link is in the, the chat now. Um, I'm sure there's kind of more information there on, on the Amazon site. Um, and then the other way is um, at the Insight Group Customer Service Summit. Um, there are events that we run three times a year now. And um, we have two coming up, one in New York, um, that's in, in the fall. And we also have the, our London event in, in Europe. So um, that's going to be coming up in, in the fall as well. So there's plenty of opportunities there to learn from people like Michael uh, and Giovanni and lots of other great brands. And also we handpick a selection of vendors. So um, you'll, you'll see Josh there as well. Um, but yeah, it's a really great way to learn. For more information on those, check out the links that are on screen now. And um, yeah, apologies for, for running slightly late, but thanks again um, to all our panelists for, for joining us. It's been a really interesting discussion today. I'm um, looking forward to listening back to the, the recordings and um, yeah, and writing plenty of notes. And um, so thanks again to the panelists and thanks again to, to everyone listening. And I hope to catch you soon for, uh, for another Insight webinar. Thanks.